mishaps that happened in previous campaigns. We haven't really seen them in this one, but I think that comes from the growth in the team and I'm quietly confident that this will be a massive and a, an amazing night tonight. Okay, well, let's certainly hope it will be. It's a wonderful scene at Hampden Park. It's been some time since there's been so much at stake for an Irish team, so let's savour the occasion now in the company of our big match commentary team of George Hamilton and Stephanie Roach. Thank you so much, Peter. We are here and ready for another big night, a huge night for Ireland. Back in 2008, the manager of the Republic of Ireland women's team, Noel Kerr, Noel King said it was it was the most important night in the history of the FEI for women's football. Well, this gets bigger still. We are ready for an historic night in Glasgow. inspiring her players on this special night in Hampden Park. Now, the Scottish anthem. Something stirring about the pipes, and certainly in Hampden Park, where the crowd is in and ready for an historic night for the Scots, who have qualified for Europe before, who have qualified for the World Cup before. But this is, of course, something entirely different, and Ireland on the cusp of history. And here is the Scottish lineup, which is one change from the team that beat Austria last Thursday night. Fiona Brown comes in, the right of the attack for Lana Cleland. Yeah, I think uh, Brown came on for Clennon at half time the other night as well, didn't she? So, not too many changes across that front line. Um, they have such good pace in Thomas and Emsley in, in particular. And then you have Cuthbert, and we know how, how um, exciting Caroline Weir is on the ball as well. So, some very good technical players across the front line and pace to worry about in that Irish defence. So, we've got to be tight at the back and make sure we don't give them too much space to start. The Irish team 
Well, we welcome back Niamh Tahi after injury, Diane Caldwell too, Jamie Finn after suspension, and Alonio Gorman for our first competitive start in 11 months. Yeah, and um, Finn coming in at right wing back, I think, and Fahi coming in at uh, right centre back. I think Clara Reardon can feel a little bit hard done by him. She was very good in that game previously, but the experience of Fahi is needed in a game like this. I think we'll, we need her in this game. And also, Anya Gorman, delighted to see her back in. I've particularly seen her playing a little bit higher up the pitch where I feel she'll be able to affect the game. Really hard working player. We'll get up and down and we'll do the defensive work, but I think she'll pose a threat going forward too. So. Match officials led by Esther Stobley from Switzerland and agronomist from the capital Bern. Referee at two past World Cups and Olympics and the three most recent Euros at Euro 22 in the England in the summer. She was in the middle for Germany, Denmark, Northern Ireland, England. And the semi-final between England and Sweden at Bramall Lane. And we were there. We were and she done, she had done a good job that night to be fair to her. So I hope she'll have a good game tonight as well. So a very experienced referee to take charge of what is a very pivotal, crucial match for both these teams. But before we get underway, recent events, of course, have cast a dark cloud over this week in Irish life. The tragedy in Chrysler at the end of last week is remembered in Hamden Park in Glasgow tonight as we reflect and respect the 10 who lost their lives in the tragedy in Chrysler at the end of last week, there will be a moment of silence after the referee manages to bring the Scottish out of their huddle for a minute's respect. There are times when a game of football pales into insignificance. Pedro Martinez Lope Losa, the manager of Scotland, famously uh, brought Katie McCabe to uh, Arsenal all those years ago, one of the, the lines. And of course, Vera Pau, she uh, came to Scotland with her husband when he was appointed assistant manager to Craig Brown, and they found a place for her as manager of the Scottish women's team. Well, that was the beginning of a long journey for Vera Pau that has brought her here tonight. Uh, she's been to uh, major tournaments as a manager, but how she would love to take this Irish team uh, to Australia and New Zealand. They have it at their feet. Of course, there are two matches, the results of which we will find out eventually, and uh, it will have relevance on what happens here. But two of the three winners tonight will progress, and there'll be a place for the other winner in uh, Down Under in a playoff, intercontinental playoff. Both the other games in extra time, of course, we will keep you posted. Portugal have gone 2 1 up, but, but we will, uh, of course, keep you posted on that while concentrating on events here at Hamden Park, where the Irish women have the ball at their toe. Yeah, it's, it's what we expected, isn't it, from Ireland? It was good defending, taking solid, and then they looked to play that excellent ball forward towards Heather Payne to make them runs off the defenders. We've seen Heather Payne in every game so far. She's worked herself into the grounds, and she'll be expected to do that again tonight, George. She's certainly the most willing of runners. And here's that famous long throw as well. <laughs> Megan Campbell. Well, they know all about this, and they will attempt to defend it. Uh, the first of these... Missiles hurled by Megan Campbell into that Scottish penalty area. Up there was uh, Diane Caldwell too. Scotland managing to dig it away, but not very successfully. Katie McCabe with a shot. And it's uh, Lisa Evans under pressure. Able to clear it. But uh, the initial threats are coming from Ireland, who psychologically are perfectly prepared for this. They didn't have the game last week, unlike the Scots. Uh, they've had time to uh, reflect, to assess, to reset. Uh, the Scots 
you might say, because they had that game, might be uh, more attuned tactically. But Ireland have had a chance to work it all out in their heads, and they're ready. They've been ready. They've said it for this. And it's a huge, huge night for Irish women's football. A huge night for Irish football in general. You think back across all the years of the eight playoffs that the men's team were involved in, at the playoff that you made your debut in back in uh, 2008. Coming on with ice skates, I think. In, yeah, in I should have had them on, I think, that night, yeah. But it seems a long time ago, 14 years ago, doesn't... As I said, it seems not that long ago. But yeah, I think, as you mentioned, Scotland getting that game against Austria, you can kind of have... Look at it from both ways. They might be tired, haven't gone to extra time. Um, I know Ireland were preparing during the week and they played against the lads team um, to, to prepare themselves for it. So they have got match fitness under their belt, too. A chance there. Worth the, worth the effort from Heather Payne, but you have to say it's dynamic uh, in the Irish midfield to win that ball back. Yeah, they've started quite well, Ireland. I think they've, they've, they've sitting in their shape. You can see they're, they're well, they're well set up, well organised, but they're also getting forward when they can too. Good start early on. I suppose with this strange, convoluted qualification process, it's best that we just concentrate on what happens here, and if there is something of relevance, we'll we'll bring it to you. But the, the task at hand is the obvious task at hand in any football matches is to win it, and that's what they will set out to do. And we've we've seen them do so well in recent times, and the results that they've they've managed to eke out even when they haven't necessarily played that well. Yeah, exactly. I think it's it's a complicated route. I think I've had so many people ask me questions about this qualifying and the playoff and how it works. But the main thing tonight is that they win the game, and everything else hopefully will fall into place. Lily Ag there getting involved. Payne after this, a typical Payne run into the corner with her is Sophie Howard. It's Heather Payne on the ball. Katie McCabe with the cross. Couldn't quite find Anya O'Gorman. And it's out. And Ireland have a corner. Of course, Anya was back then in, in that playoff way back then. One of three yeah. who are still involved. Herself, Lu Louise Quinn and Neve Fahey were there too, yeah. It's good play though from Ireland, good positive play, good cross into the box, as you said, good run from Heather Payne down that line, but corner kick here now, I think this is where we could we could get something in this game with a few um, set pieces with the players we have in the box and with the delivery Katie McCabe has, so good positive play in this certain last or first few minutes. Louise Quinn conspicuous in there, wearing the number four, Diane Caldwell with seven on her back in there too, they're big threats <coughs> as uh, Katie McCabe prepares to take the corner. Heather Payne making a use of herself on the goal line. McCain's corner, looking for Quinn, headed away firmly by Sophie Howard. And it's uh, Jamie Finn who wins it back. Now Denise O'Sullivan, O'Sullivan looking for McCabe, and McCabe in there making use of herself. Lily Ag too, Ag still battling, and Heather Payne, and they really are going about this with a will, aren't they? Liliag trying to dig it out, the cave in there too, hell of pain, but in the end it goes out off pain and it's a throw to Scotland. Yes, yeah, brilliant from Ireland, isn't it? You can see they're not letting them settle, this is what I hoped they would do. So it's a good start, I think they haven't let Scotland get on the ball, when they do get on the ball they're putting pressure on them high up the pitch and trying to win that ball back. It's a good play from Liliag. Aaron Cuthbert back with Sophie Howard of Leicester City. But the Irish defence perfectly organised. And back there for Courtney Brosnan to start it up again. Turn of the Scots to try and put the pressure on. Meet Megan Campbell forcing the throw. But, uh, the referee is not happy that uh, she took it from where it was supposed to be taken. It's the right idea, isn't she? She's trying to set Katie away there. I think if the, if the referee hadn't blown the whistle, it would have been dangerous for the Scots. The Spanish manager of the Scots uh, says they have to try and play like a World Cup team because they believe that they're worthy of a place at the World Cup, but it's got to be earned. And Vera Pau's team in the way. Definitely, I think from speak, speaking to some of the Scottish players and some of the players I know around WSL or Scots, they, they're definitely confident coming into this game that they're going to win. So it's a good start from Ireland to kind of keep them let, them, let them know they're going to be in the game early on.
This is the Scottish captain, Rachel Corsi. 136 appearances tonight. It's an incredible achievement, isn't it, to make that many appearances for your country? I think the Irish record is 134 with Emma Byrne, the, the former goalkeeper. Yeah, we've got a couple out there who'll be looking to try and catch her as well, I'm sure. Yep, uh, interesting little line. Niamh Fahey equals uh, Kira Grant uh, on 105 tonight. She's uh, joint fourth now in the all-time Irish list with Anya O'Gorman on 111. Olivia O'Toole at 130. And Emma Byrne, of course, 134. Speaking of caps, it would be absolutely wonderful if Louise Quinn on 99 were to get her century up at the World Cup. Be brilliant, wouldn't it? Be great to see. Still a while to go in this game, though, George. <laughs> I think we have a little bit of uh, worrying still to do before we can start considering what might be. It's it's going to be one of those nights you feel. And Cuthbert dispossessed the chance of an Irish counter. And Scott's funnel back. And it's their captain, Corsi, who takes command and then invites the foul from Heather Payne. It's a free kick to Scotland. It's a good play from Corsi. You can see what she's doing there. She just uses her body to block the ball and any touch she's going down. It's interesting. I think Erin Cuthbert seemed to kick the ground there. She seems to be hobbling a little bit. This is Samantha Kerr. And Denise O'Sullivan winning it back. Cleverly, but uh, unfortunately, just a little bit too much pace on the ball, and so it's out for a Scottish throw. <laughs> Doherty and Corsi, the captain, and off to Sophie Howard. Fiona Brown, quickly closed down by Katie McCabe. Avira Pau has them uh, strictly drilled in what they should be up to in any given phase of the game, and you can see that in the the way they're they're regimented. They hold their position, they know where they should be, and they're able to deal with the uh, with the Scottish press when it comes. Corsi now for Scotland. It's clever from Lily Ag, just making a nuisance of herself. Katie McCabe reading the intention. Oh, there's a free kick. It was suggested <laughs> in one of the papers today that uh, opposition tactics when Ireland are in town is kick McCabe, <laughs> kick O'Sullivan. <laughs> She's such a good player, isn't she? She draws the foul in there. It's really good play to Ireland, by Ireland and Katie McCabe. You can see she just finds a position where there's no go no gaps, no ball being able to be played through, and she's able to nick it and break away and get a free kick for the team. And Aaron Cuthbert gets a talking to from the referee. It's just a talking to, nothing more. Bit of a mix up there know. between the two of them. Nobody seemed to know what, what exactly was happening there. I think they left it to each other, didn't they? It's good play from Denise O'Sullivan again, though. Putting pressure on straight away. This is very, very obvious what happened there. Lily Ag. Be an interesting matchup over on that Scottish right hand side as well. We know Lisa Evans loves to get forward from right back. So Katie McCabe's going to have her work her out defensively as well, and hopefully, if she gets forward, we might leave us gaps as well, and hopefully we can exploit that. Corsi once more for Scotland, off to Howard. And no way up that right-hand channel. Katie McCabe has the door firmly shut, so it's back with Corsi. Scotland will try another approach. We'll try ex exactly the same channel, but Katie McCabe in position. Heather Payne coming back. They managed to bypass Katie McCabe on this occasion. Quinn to get it away. 
Back with Corsi once more. Caroline Weir. So Weir once more back then with uh, Cuthbert. The Chelsea player stopped by uh, Sullivan. And such a creative player, but she does a, a mountain of work in the uh, in the destructive department as well. Yeah, she's brilliant at that. She always has been. She, she never uh, shies away from taking the ball and always getting in, working hard defensively. It's Weir now. A dangerous moment for Scotland. Chats <gasps> all. The crossbar has denied them. The penalty. And she's given the penalty kick. And a yellow card for a handball, presumably against Neil Fahey. Well, Neil Fahey has uh, protested the case, but um, the referee has given the yellow card and it would appear given the penalty. Martha Thomas with the effort. Katie McCabe uh, as captain making her point, but the, the referee is not to be moved. It was hard to see from here, wasn't it? I didn't think there was... Let's see here. So... Thomas shoots oh, and has hit her hand, hasn't it? It's so unfortunate. Well, that'll be a talking point, but it's now given Scotland the opportunity to open the scoring in the 13th minute. Caroline Weir against Courtney Brosnan. And the opportunity for the Scots. And Brosnan yes. saves! What a save, great what a save. save. So the aberration is negated by superb goalkeeping. And Caroline Weir is denied. Well, what a moment that was. And what a save that was. And what a marker that lays down. Brilliant from Courtney Brosnan. Yeah, as you said, it was unlucky for Niamh Fahey to get that handball. I think she put her, she's trying to put her body on the line to block, make that block, and her hands was in an unnatural position and blocks it. So I think it was unlucky. And what a save from Courtney Brosnan to keep her on in this game. Brilliant. So Scotland spurned their first opportunity, but out of it they get a corner. But what will that do for Courtney Brosnan? What a moment. And she will be brimful of confidence now if she wasn't at the start. I'm happy for her as well. She, we said before, we've mentioned her so many times that to start of this campaign, there were a few ropey moments towards the end of the last one, but she's been excellent throughout this campaign. Well, here's Cuthbert with a corner now for Scotland. And plenty of orange shirts in there. It's back out there to Cuthbert once more. They're trying to measure the cross and it's headed away by Caldwell. Here's Weir. And that one's over the top. Well, Caroline Weir is uh, one of the star players for Scotland. 92nd international appearance. Plays for Real Madrid, but couldn't beat Courtney Brodsman. Not at the penalty spot and not there either. You can see what she's going for there, can't you? I don't know whether it's a slip or she's intentionally trying to chip her, but knowing the player she is, she's probably meant it. But as you say, Courtney Brodsman making the save from the penalty is brilliant for us. I think it's, it was unfortunate to give away the penalty, but hopefully now that will get us into the game and let us settle again here. And it's worth recalling that uh, Caroline Weir did convert a penalty against Ukraine. One of the two goals she scored in the uh, in the qualification. But uh, she's been unsuccessful in the spot against Ireland. And here come Ireland once more. Is that a foul? No, it's an offside. It's offside, is it? Yeah. The offside occurred before the foul. Yeah, I think Ireland just need to settle again here. They had a good start. Scotland really did eke out that, that little chance or that chance to, to get the penalty from, from not too much. You know, they didn't have much of the ball starting off, so Ireland need to just get themselves calm again. Scotland are definitely going to have a bit more possession throughout this first half and just get themselves settled and look to get back on the ball. Corsi for Scotland. Cut out easily by Fahi. Here's Fahi once more. We're looking at the run of pain. Corsi cuts it out. Oh, Sullivan in there with a the block on Corsi. It's Fahey finding uh, 
on your Gorman and up the line for Payne. Corsi having to tidy up and back with the goalkeeper. Who's uh, changed her name in the course of this tournament? Uh, she got married, uh, and uh, she's now Lee Gibson, as opposed to Lee Alexander, as she was married the uh, Scottish men's team kit man. It's a couple of girls, isn't there? I think Emma Mitchell too now changed her name. She got married during the summer too. You're still Stephanie Roach. Well, <laughs> for us, you are. Anyway. <laughs> Opportunity to create something here for Denise O'Sullivan. Jamie Finn. It's easy for Corsi. Pressure on here. Doherty kept her composure. And it's Cuthbert now. And all the way across to Lisa Evans. Oh, too heavy a touch that was. And it worked uh, out for her there, didn't it? She got lucky. And lucky again as the ball broke free uh, for the Scots. This is weird. Stopped by an uncompromising challenge by Fahey. Back with Cuthbert and all the way back to Corsi. It's as you'd expect. Nip and tuck. So much at stake. Off the goes to Sophie Howard. Care. Looking for the run. To Brosnan out of her goal. And uh, it's a corner, is the results. Martha Thomas uh, not happy that that's all it was. I think Corny's taken a chance there, hasn't she? I think there might have been a, a touch on, the, on Thomas. We'll see it again here now. We've got away with it, though. Yeah, they do say if you're a goalkeeper and you come for it, you have to make sure you get it. I think Thomas, as you can see by her, she's having a word with the referee. She's got the first touch. The referee not for turning. Well, here's the corner. Scott second. So well defended there. But Jamie Finn. Courtney Brosnan maybe got away with one there after the heroics of the penalty save. See it again here now. Mm. I think maybe she did get away with one there. Now it's got to be a free kick to Ireland, which gives me the opportunity to uh, let you know that Portugal have gone 3 1 up now against Iceland. Uh, Tatiana Pinto getting the third goal. Uh, if that stays the way it is, Portugal will be on 19 points and um, Iceland will remain on 18. But as I was saying, it's, it's all terribly complex until it's actually over. Uh, I think we should, <laughs> we should leave it be, <laughs> apart from updating you on how things are. It's Portugal who look like winning an extra time against Iceland anyway. And as last we heard, it was uh, Switzerland won Wales one. Jamie Finn starting up the attack. Payne still, Heather Payne. Oh, and that's how dangerous Scotland thought he was. <laughs> Get rid. <laughs> Caroline Weir, no questions asked. Straight out of play. It's better from Ireland though as well. You can see when Heather Payne gets on the ball, she goes back into Jamie Finn and builds the play up and it's a good touch around the corner from Anya O'Gorman as well and we have a chance here for another throw in there's a good run up around Hamden Park from Megan Campbell as well here it's, uh, it's, it's a big stadium isn't it uh, and a lot of space around the actual pitch so Megan Campbell can uh, wind herself up and, and hurl it right in there and the heads go up and the bounce beats them all it's Nifa he goes to try and retrieve And uh, they'll be happy with a goal kick. Well, this was the previous Scottish attack. Yeah, it's good build-up play, isn't it? 
done well down that right hand side. The previous Scottish attack that led to the penalty that uh, led to the save by Courtney Brosnan. So far, so good. But uh, it's a tense, a, a tense evening for her. That's for sure. Yeah, I think the game settled down a little bit more, hasn't it? I think we expected Scotland to have some of the ball, most of the ball of Amman before the start of the game. We know how Ireland like to play on the counter and just stay tight. So it's kind of fallen into place now. I think that's the way it started. That's the way it's. Um, as I said, Ireland started really well on the attack, getting on the ball and trying to impose their game on, on Scotland. But Scotland definitely coming into the game a little bit more now. And an opportunity to try and unpick the Irish defence. On your Gorman helping it away. A little bit of pressure coming on from Scotland, enjoying a period of decent possession. Cuthbert. Oh, dispossessed by Denise O'Sullivan. Now, Payne running ahead. Making up the ground is uh, Katie McCabe. O'Sullivan finding it hard against Cuthbert. Who's doing for Scotland what O'Sullivan does for Ireland. Louise Quinn in the way. And now this Lily Ag. They've won it back. Jamie Finn. Finn drilled forward, but maybe a little bit too firmly. Yeah, I think you can see Cuthbert there now. I think she realises she's not going to get that much time with Nisa Sullivan around her. She works really well hard to get back and win it back off her. But I think she needs to just be a little bit quicker on the ball because, as I said, with Nisa Sullivan around, she's never going to stop. She's going to keep hounding until she wins that ball back. She's done really well to recover there, Cuthbert. It's with Corsi now, Scottish captain. Howard. This is that Fiona Brown. Again, a crisp Irish challenge and ball bouncing out of a Scottish leg. It's an Irish throw. Campbell for O'Sullivan. Didn't get the free kick there. And an opportunity for a cross to come in for Fiona Brown. Ran fat. Louise Quinn, an important touch there. Really important touch. It's a great touch, it's a really good play from Fiona Brown on that right hand side, isn't it? She goes by Megan Campbell really well and thankfully Louise Quinn is in a good position to take a flick off. You can see here it's a little bit of skill to go by Megan Campbell and get a good delivery into a dangerous area, but Louise Quinn there to head it out of play. She really is a warrior at the back for Ireland, Louise Quinn. She's been brilliant, hasn't she, this whole campaign and she hasn't put a foot wrong. It's been excellent for a long, 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 long time for Ireland in the centre of that defence. Jahar, he tried to get away from Finn. But Lisa Sullivan arriving to make a use of herself. And back with Corsi. Hemsley kept it in, just about. And back with Corsi once more. It's a good play from Anya Gorman there as well. You can see her and Jamie Finn got switched and Anya was switched on to get out there. And and block out the danger from Elmsley. You know how fast she is if she gets a run in here. She's done well to block the pass before she could even get her head up. Having to build from the back once more. Howard. Scottish throw. I think you can see from the girls as well, they look confident, they look they're really up for this game. I think coming into a game of this magnitude, you wonder would nerves be, be an issue. But I think looking at these Irish girls, they seem to be really up for this game and they're not phased by the occasion by any, chance, by any means at all. Howard. It's Payne arriving to put it out of play. Another Scottish throw. Vera Pau has her arms folded. She had made a little gesture there, obviously something she wanted to tweak, but her body language suggests she's happy enough for the way things are going. Yeah, I think she should be. I think, they, as I said, Ireland started really well. Scotland, I think, were expected to come into the game at some point, and they have come in a little bit, but apart from that, obviously, penalty and the save, and 
And the build-up to that goal, I think they've done, I they've done quite well. Maybe McCabe getting in there, Ireland winning it back. And this now, Onyo Gorman, Fahi, and Jamie Finn. Clever ball up the line for Payne. Always the winning runner, willing runner. And has kept it in play and has earned a throw. Terrific. Really good play from Ireland. Good build-up play. I think we spoke about them against Finland. I think at times we're trying to kick the ball forward too quickly. When they weren't set and they were, just, I think of one time where Katie McCage just kicked the ball out of play, which is so unlike her. But you can see Ireland, they have a little bit more purpose to their build-up today. And once again, uh, we get the, uh, the we're howitzer. For, we're playing for throw-ins now, I think, George. <laughs> It's quite the weapon to have in your armoury, isn't it? Exactly, I was going to say, and why wouldn't we? Indeed, here she comes, Megan Campbell. Right into the danger zone. In. Oh, it's straight Did into it the touch. Did it get a touch? That's the question. No, it didn't. I thought I'd touch a Scottish player on the way through there. If it goes straight in the goal from a throw-in, it is no goal. Now, that'll be interesting to see again. I thought I looked to change direction a small bit, didn't it? Referee quite uh, adamant. Uh, she didn't see a touch. So it's. Uh, let's see. I think, in fairness, Sophie She's Hart. clever, isn't she? Away. It's just unfortunate Lilia can't get a touch on it behind her there. It's amazing to see, mind you. You rarely see a foul throw in football these days, and you rarely see a throw in end up straight in the net. If only they counted, George. <laughs> if only they counted, indeed. But again, I think uh, watching Gibson against Austria, there were times where she was a bit hesitant in terms of coming out into her and commanding her area. So I think if we can get balls of that in there, it will cause trouble for her. And it's just an indication, even though it didn't actually end up in a positive outcome, of just what a threat that long throw of Megan Campbell's could be. Lily Ag just a, a whisker away from making the contact that would have made it a goal. Corsi. And Brosnan thought about coming, but it's gone very wide. Probably wise not to have come. And Campbell away, but uh, only as far as Evans. Jamie Finn clearing it, but only as far as Corsi. A moment of danger from Scotland, headed away by Louise Quinn. Good play initially from Corsi over to Brown, wasn't it? It was a good run off the shoulder of Diane Caldwell into a dangerous area. Thankfully, the pullback wasn't met by any Scottish player. So Corsi away to Howard once more. It's a, a combination that's often been used as Scotland try to play out from the back. Ireland keeping the pressure on them, forcing them back into their own half. And cut out there by Megan Campbell. Scottish throw as we approach half an hour. She slipped out of her hands as she went to throw, is it? It's a, a dewy kind of night. It's chilly enough and you can feel the dew kind of settling. But at least it's not uh, quite uh, the rainy night it was when the Scots played Austria here last Thursday. That well, was terrible conditions, wasn't it? I think the, the rain has held off so far anyway. Now here's Heather Payne on the run, in behind Corsi. Now she's all alone, all alone, and Corsi got back to cover. Corsi's done really well there, hasn't she? Experienced defender. And that's experience too from Sophie <laughs> Howard. That was clever. O'Sullivan in. You know, the work that she does on the negative side of the coin, she's so so good going forward, but the the real hard work that she does to go in and win the ball back and put the pressure on it, I think a commanding performance in the midfield every time for Denise O'Sullivan. Yeah, and it's the work that you think goes unnoticed at times, doesn't it? I think the work that she puts in off the ball is, is probably even better than the work that she puts on on the ball at times. She's obviously been brilliant in this campaign for Ireland with the goal she scored, but her defensive work, as I said, and important pressure and that's exactly what Vera wants as well she fits the system really well and how she plays it's just dogged determination all the time 
Now this is uh, Caroline Weir. It's Howard and Cuthbert. And back with Howard once more. That's patience from Scotland. And Ireland's set up as a 4 5 4 1 now with the Scots in possession. The two banks that the Scots will have to try to play through if they're to threaten the Irish goal. Howard now. And no way around the outside. Katie McCabe makes the crucial intervention and it's out for a Scottish throw. It's all come down that right hand side for Scotland as well. We've yet to see Emsley get on the ball or, or show her pace in behind. It's all come down the right hand side for Scotland. That's Brown trying to get it into the middle but it finds only Katie McCabe. And there's another one for Heather Payne to chase against Corsi once more. And again she's on her own but her support is arriving now. And that might go back to Payne. A little tug from Corsi. It's a bit of a corner there, there wasn't there? She just got away with that. Referee didn't see it as such. But Ireland win it back. McCabe. Maybe a little bit too hurried and tried to get it forward to Payne on that occasion. And the possession back with Scotland. It's now Weir. And off to Doherty. Howard. Care okay, trying to work it up that right side. Back it comes to Corsi. Corsi again, spread wide for Doherty, who couldn't control it. Uh, the pressure off Ireland for the moment. She took her eye off the ball there, didn't she? Is it coming to her? It's a little elementary error. Well, the news from the Iberian Peninsula is that uh, Portugal have dislodged Iceland, who were second in the table going into this, the playoff table. So Portugal beat them by four goals to one after extra time and move on to 19 points. 19 points and Iceland have 18, so Portugal may be a bit of a surprise there, but they are now sitting pretty on 19 points with a goal difference of 12. Yeah, definitely a surprise, I would say. But I think if you watch Portugal in the Euros, they really did show the quality they had at times. They're capable of results like that. It's still a long way to go here in Glasgow. And the uh, Swiss-Welsh match uh, still isn't over yet. Uh, when last we heard, it was 1-1 in extra time. And the unusual thing about uh, that, of course, is if it ends 1-1 and is decided on penalties, uh, there will only be a single point for the two teams, despite the fact that one of them will, in inverted commas, win the game in the penalty shootout. It will go down as a draw and only a single point, which, if it stays like that, would mean Switzerland would be on 20 and Wales on 15, Portugal having moved on to 19. Uh, meaning that Ireland, with a victory here, would be on 20. Oh. As I speak, Switzerland score in the first minute of additional time in at the end of extra time, which Fabian Holden has uh, made herself a hero in Switzerland because she may very well have consolidated their position at the top of the group. Switzerland 2, Wales 1. Stays like that, Switzerland move on to 22 points. Cross from McCabe. Oh. What an opportunity that was for Onyo Gorman. Really, really must go down as a miss. It's a great delivery in from Katie McCabe, isn't it? So so well to get that cross in. It just oh, their chances to on you would score all day. Sam was behind her a little bit. I think she just gets under it too much. I see Doherty is putting a little bit of pressure on her from behind, but that's a big chance for Ireland. Best chance they've had. Keeper furious with the defence. Meanwhile, at the other end, Martha Thomas 
And Courtney Brosnan's down to save. You have to say though, Ireland did get in very easily there. It's a great ball in from Katie McCabe, but Anya Gomer finds herself between two of the Scottish defenders to get a free head on goal. You can understand Gibson's frustration. Quinn in command here. Back to Brosnan. The missed kick by Cuthbert. Of course he's there, but then Ag can send it forward. Payne trying to get involved. Interception by Doherty. And now it's with uh, Samantha Kerr. He's dispossessed unfairly. It's a free kick to Scotland. Lily Ag, what, a, what a, an impact she's made since arriving in the squad. This is just her fifth appearance already. She's two international goals. Yeah, she's been really good since she's come in, hasn't she? It's not just the goals as well. I think her work rate in the team. She's good, good at going forwards. Good defending as well. She's always running around looking to get on the ball and win it back for her team. She's been really good since she's come in. It's Howard. Caldwell will let that go. And that's going to be an Irish goal kick. So, the Swiss have defeated Wales. The word is through. The result is in. Switzerland 2, Wales 1. So, Switzerland on 22 points. Portugal on 19, Iceland on 18, all of which means Ireland have to win here, basically. Still remains the same, isn't that right? <laughs> it's just the other results have gone our way. If we can get the win here now, it'll be brilliant. An Irish win would put them on the plane to the World Cup. What an incentive. Shot from O'Gorman was not too far away. And Rachel Corsi is not terribly happy about the way things have been developing around her. They've been getting caught out a little bit, haven't they? I think Katie McKay have found herself at acres of space there. You can see the cross is put in, it's just behind the Gorman. She does really, really well to get on the end of it. And again, this is what Andy's all about. It's getting a chance to get a shot on goal and she does well to get turned, she just drags the shot wide. She's putting in a tremendous amount of work getting up and down that line. As we watch that, uh, there's a foul in the Irish half. It'll be an Irish free kick. Yes, re recalled after a, almost a year away and really making an impact on that right side, Anya O'Gorman. Yeah, she's a fantastic player, a fantastic role model to any young player. Always sticks out, always very professional in her approach. And as Tony touched on before the game, she's usually playing right back within this Irish team and she's playing a little bit further up the pitch where she does for P-mounts. We play alongside her every week and she does really well in every game we play in, so I'm happy to see her on the pitch and higher up the pitch too. Caldwell chasing back to make sure uh, no harm comes of this. That was Finn. And O'Gorman after this, but leaving it for Payne in the end, who also reacted swiftly. And Payne, still she goes on. And the whistle, well, it's <laughs> anybody's there, isn't it? But it's, it's gone Scotland's way. I think Heather was fighting with the ball a little bit there, wasn't she? She just couldn't get it out of her feet. Typical Heather Payne performance. 100% effort and always in the thick of things when the ball comes her way. Never shies away from the challenge. That's just unfortunate. The yeah, stumble. Just, just got stuck under her feet. She just couldn't get it out. But as you say, the amount of work she puts in every game she plays is, is brilliant to see. And it can be difficult after doing all that running when you get the ball. <laughs> Clash uh, with Katie McKay with uh, Lisa Evans. 
and that very much a case of 11 against 11. Yeah, former teammates at Arsenal as yeah. well. They know each other very well. So well inside the final five minutes of this first half. Uh, Scotland with a penalty miss. Uh, Ireland with a close encounter with a goal, courtesy of Onyo Gorman, but still it's nil-nil. Howard. Looking to the run. But the ball was always likely to be first to the goal line. And that particular Scottish attack petering out. Yeah, there was just too much on it there for Lisa Evans to catch it, but it's a dangerous ball into an area. You can see Lisa Evans makes that run. Megan Campbell has come out and Lisa Evans makes a run off Katie McCabe. We just have to be aware of that. As we mentioned before, Lisa Evans loves to get forward. Louise Quinn just getting caught there. The ball out for a Scottish throw. Cave in there, making sure she won it, and that's pain. The cave on the wing, that's for Katie McCabe. Making grind up the middle is O'Gorman. Ag is in there too, it's come to pain. And a chance, oh, taken off the toe. Or was it Lily Ag? A chance was there for Ireland. It was Denise O'Sullivan, in fact, who was in there. Now cross again for McCabe. <laughs> and Howard intervened, goalkeeper. Not very happy with her central defensive partner. Nice out. Irish throw. There yeah. might have been a shout from the sideline to let that go out. You could, you could see Vati was thinking about keeping it in and getting the ball back in there, but we know the weapon that Megan Campbell has. I know, your, your, your instinct is to keep it in yeah. play and then, no! <laughs> I think Megan there was a little throw. bit of a shout there, all right. Let's go play again from Ireland towards the end of this first half. We know what's coming. Last time one of these came in, it entered the net, but there was no touch, so it was no goal. So let's see what happens this time. Megan Campbell. Magnificent throw again, right in the danger zone. Oh, that was an opportunity for Payne. She got right underneath it. But such a weapon, such a weapon it is. It's brilliant, isn't it? It's just such an added. This is a chance as well, isn't it? Just for, oh, she just gets under it again. They're so uncomfortable, the Scots, under this. It, it's, it's unorthodox, it's not like a corner that uh, has a, a, a trajectory you can kind of work out. This is coming from a completely different angle. And yeah, I think every team that comes up against it, they probably train to try and to work against it, but you can see that it's, it's such a hard ball to defend against, particularly, as I mentioned before, when you have the players that we have who are so good in the air. And that's uh, intervention by Sophie Howard. It's telling you how... Uh, they're happy enough to put it out of play. Here, so we reach 45 minutes. One additional minute. I think Ireland have been really good towards the end of this first half. I think we've shown that we put the pressure on Scotland. There are opportunities there to be had. We've had, apart from the penalty, obviously we've had the best chances in the game so far. And here's another one coming. The study and concentration. This. Uh, Megan Campbell sets herself up to hurl it once more. And there it goes. Oh, and Fang at the back and off the line and in again. And Ag denied. Still not away. Off the line once more by Howard. So, so close. So close. How has it not gone in? I thought it was in two or three times there, George. Well, this. I mentioned the secret weapon, not so secret anymore, but my goodness, how effective is it? Was it twice off the line? It's funny, hits there. it across. Howard gets it out, back again, goalkeeper saves it, loses it, and it's Howard again off the line. On that occasion, from Diane Caldwell. Fahi, Ag, and Caldwell, all denied. 
and away by Cuthbert. I think Scotland will be happy to get this half-time whistle. It's a brilliant play again, as we said, that scramble in the box could have gone anywhere. Unfortunately for Ireland, that hasn't ended up in the goal. Sophie Hard, the heroine. And the last uh, actor in the uh, first half, is it? Is she? No, they have time to take the throw in. Who have played well over the additional minute. Right again for another Scottish throw. And uh, there won't be time for that one. Referee Esther Stobley blows the whistle. Scotland with a penalty saved by Courtney Brosnan. Ireland with the better chances, but still in Hampden Park. It's Scotland nil, Ireland nil. Ireland need a win to get to the World Cup. Half time here, nil nil. Dis discussion of the first half comes after the break. And if it was given, you probably couldn't have had too many complaints. Um, but look, on the balance of things, they don't deserve to be down. So um, we'll put that down to some good luck too. Second half ready to go. Let's rejoin our commentary team in Glasgow, George and Steffi again. Thank you, Peter. We're all set for the second half with Ireland to kick off. Denise O'Sullivan will get it underway. No goals here, and uh, we know what's happened elsewhere. Portugal have given themselves a great chance of going straight to the World Cup, but. Um, there's a, a way to go here before anything is decided. And it's all very clear, uh, straightforward. If Ireland win, uh, they're on the plane without the necessity of a playoff. Another playoff. <laughs> Doherty for Scotland. And back to the captain, Corsi. No changes in personnel at half time. Uh, this is Howard. And over the head of Jamie Finn there. Claire Emsley, who hasn't seen too much of the ball in the game. Blocked by Finn, Fahey to clear. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if they try to get out that left-hand side. I think in the first half, we, it was all down the right-hand side for Scotland, wasn't it? We didn't see Emsley at all. The Spanish manager with a tartan tie. I'm sure why wouldn't you? <laughs> Doherty and Cuthbert and Corsi and now Howard to Evans. And Corsi and Howard combining once more. And set up in that 5 4 1 again. It's off the head of Fahi. Thomas had it. That's back with Cuthbert. And Cuthbert with the angle ball. Oh. Fiona Brown arriving at the back post. Just couldn't bring it under control. Yeah, it's a good ball in from Aaron Cuthbert, isn't it? You can see what she's trying to do. It's a well timed run from Fiona Brown as well. Just on the stretch, just can't quite get a good contact on the ball. It's better from Scotland, though. They're trying to shift the play a little bit quicker and try and move around a little bit more. We plenty of possession in that first half without really causing too much uh, trouble towards that Irish defence. I think Cuthbert was a little bit quiet in that first half as well. I think I, I particularly have picked her up since Thursday night since the New Year win. I think she's a very good player. Missed kick by Louise Quinn. Finn is there. They're under pressure. And the Scots have certainly begun the second half in a lively fashion. Uh, fortunately for Ireland, uh, they were caught offside. German assistant referee, Katrin Rafalski, with the flag that gives Ireland some respite. Courtney Brosnan with the, uh, the free kick to the offside. Determined play 
Gives uh, Scotland the opportunity to get Thomas away. The Thomas cross uh, cut out by Katie McCabe. Hopping up in an well, unusual position for her in this phase of the game. The right side of the centre defence. Scotland don't have the weapon that Ireland have, so Nicola Doherty's throw is uh, pretty straightforward. Emsley losing out to Fahey, who couldn't get the touch off Emsley to make it an Irish throw, so Scotland to throw in. It's Cuthbert. Too close to Brosnan. The early release from McCabe forward towards Payne. Oh. Just a little bit of reverse spin on the ball uh, took it away from Heather Payne, but McCabe was there to prevent any forward progress by Sophie Howard. Yeah, I don't think Heather Payne saw how, uh, Sophie Howard coming, did she? I think she's waiting for it to bounce and she just come across and won up, but it's a good release ball from, from Katie McCabe. But you can see the Scottish team that are really are trying to shift the play quickly, that ball from um, Aaron Cuthbert out wide here to Fiona Brown, they've tried that twice already now, so I think they're trying to get the ball to one side and then try and shift Ireland and look to play the switch of play to try and catch them out. We just have to be aware of that now. Svahi. Well, quarter has to give him by Jamie Finn there, it's tidied up by Howard. Corsi and off again to Howard. And that's not going to be any good to Scotland, all the way through to Brosnan. Well, the other two matches having ended, uh, things are quite clear now what uh, happens with Ireland. A win for Ireland, and they're straight into the World Cup next summer. A draw for Ireland, and uh, they're into the playoff the intercontinental playoff in New Zealand in February and even should they win on penalties because the game would be officially marked as a draw uh, that would only get them to the playoff as well but it's all there for them don't lose this game and the World Cup dream is still alive yeah they know exactly what they have to do now as well I'm sure they would have been told at halftime or how the other games have gone That's too long again from Scotland, who of course still have their own hopes of uh, getting to the World Cup. And I suppose for the sake of completeness, I should say if Scotland should win this match, uh, they will, unless they win it by a huge scoreline, be going to the playoff and Portugal will be going straight to the World Cup. Switzerland having qualified themselves with their victory over Wales tonight. Fiona Bryan. And on the run is Lisa Evans. Evans still. And uh, important intervention by Anya O'Gorman to end that Scottish attack. Yeah, it looks like Martha Thomas is just a bit getting ready to get her strike on goal. And Anya O'Gorman gets back in to help Jamie Finn and recovers and clears the ball. But it's a little bit better from Scotland, as we said before. I think they had loads of possession in the first half. Only real chance they have was what the penalty came from, but they really come out the second half now they're starting to play a little bit more positive and look for players within those final thirds and try to create more chances. Cuthbert. It's Emsley. And that's gone out for goal kick. Of course, the minutes tick by and the, the tension ratchets up. The prize huge. In the end, they weren't able to create the, the threat that they'd hoped for. And clearly act as well again, doesn't she? She does nibbling at her feet. I know she's there and she's not able to get a clear shot on goal.
That'll be an Ireland so. Which will have to be taken properly. All the way through to Brosnan. And out for another Scottish throw. O'Gorman again making use of herself as Cumbert Cuthbert. Finn getting it clear only as far as Howard. Scotland come again. Evans back with Howard once more. Payne with an important touch, but an opportunity here for Kerr. Oh. Uh, McCabe making it difficult for her, and now it's been passed on to Onyo Gorman. Is Denise O'Sullivan making use of herself, and just her very presence forced them to send that all the way back, start again. Yeah, you can see Ireland are happy enough just to sit in, try and win that ball back, and try counter attack if they can. Forward by Howard. It's a Weir, and Cuthbert, and now Doherty. And that was the head of Neil Fahey. And Jamie Finn sends it forward once more. Doherty losing out there to Heather Payne. Doherty back to challenge Payne at the expense of the throw. But again, the nuisance value of Heather Payne keeping Ireland on the front foot. Yes, yeah, she's done so well the last few minutes as well, just dropping in and making a nuisance of herself, trying to win that ball back. We know how good she is on the break in terms of making those runs off the shoulder to the defenders. But the last couple of times there, she's won the ball back well for her team. And of course, forcing a throw like that means uh, we have another of these howitzers to be flung in by Megan Campbell. As uh, Scotland think about bringing on Abby Harrison, who scored the winner against Austria in extra time. Here's Megan Campbell once more. Hurled into the danger zone again. The touch sends it out for a, a goal kick. Just couldn't get a, a like decent a... touch on it. I think Louise Finn was <laughs> suggesting it took a touch off a Scottish player. I thought so too, to be honest. I thought it came off one of the Scottish defenders there, but the referee thinks not. And here comes Scotland once more. Doherty. And this is Corsi. And Payne forcing Corsi into another backward maneuver. Sophie Howard. And McCabe getting in there to force the hurried clearance and then O'Sullivan and just lost out there it's Weir driving at the defence Weir with a shot Brosnan was right behind it yeah it's brilliant from Caroline Weir you can see when she receives the ball she just turns Denise O'Sullivan so well manages to keep a hold of the ball which we said in the first half isn't that, isn't that easy to do with Denise O'Sullivan just a shot maybe just didn't have enough venom on it and Brosnan's able to deal with it well, but that's what Carolyn Weir is capable of. If she gets into those positions, she can't hurt you. Caldwell's header forward. Back again by Kerr. And now Brown. And a run around the outside here. And we have a willing cup for chance. But a shout from Courtney Brosnan says, it's mine. And that Scottish attack peters out. With a cross that didn't do the desired effect. Just didn't get enough bend on it, Lisa Evans. And as you say, Courtney Brosnan commanding her area really well there. I think for the defence, it's good to hear that coming out. The goalkeeper making sure that she knows her, defend or her defenders know she's there. Just a little bit of an issue with the foot. Courtney Brosnan just wants a little assistance. Seems to be an issue with her shin here by the looks of things, isn't it? Didn't see anything happening as I came into her there, so hopefully it's nothing too 
serious. She doesn't look too distressed. And it would not be a player that uh, Vera Pau would want to be leading the field at this stage. And having uh, decided that she needed a, a consultation, she sat down on the turf. The game was stopped, and uh, Vera Pau. Well, I'd say she is a touch concerned about her goalkeeper. Uh, she might have to consider using one of her substitutes in that regard. But uh, there was no indication as to what might have happened to her. Yeah, she seemed to come out quite comfortably and catch that ball there. So you'd wonder, is there was there something beforehand that maybe is reoccurring for her here? But I think she looks OK. Hopefully she is now. As you say, it's not a position you want to be changing. Particularly she's played so well so far tonight. Thanks for the break, Ref. I'm OK <laughs> now. It's one of those little things, I think. I'm fine. I think that's the message. I think we'll see how she kicks the ball here now, anyway, how it goes. <laughs> but she seems to be grand. Right, there's going to be that right foot anyway that's going to dispatch the ball. And we should look closely to see how she reacts, but... <laughs> I think our assessment from uh, from the armchair is that she's fine and there's no indication as she kicked that that there was anything untoward. It's pulling up Fiona Bryan. Dahi with her. And the support comes from Weir and then back to Evans. And the Irish in the Scottish faces, so they had to go all the way back to the, the back division. Now forward by Corsi. And that has come through. Campbell can clear it. Katie McCabe. And she's earned the throw. It's a good ball from Megan Campbell as well. I think we, we spoke about Ireland at times maybe just looking to launch the ball forward with that one she's looking to try and find Katie McCabe and Katie's able to keep the ball and keep possession for the team. It's Megan Campbell again. It's like a handball, didn't it? Yeah, she's getting it. <laughs> Took her a moment there, George. I was getting worried. <laughs> yeah, I think the... Uh... She didn't quite have the whistle in readiness. I think that was the problem. <laughs> the free kick is, is ready to be taken, and it's Ireland's, and they can get back into Scottish territory. It's Megan Campbell, but met by Evans. And now Weir. And Weir, the pass on. Thomas. Thomas's cross creating a bit of consternation in there and it's Weir and Weir and Cuthbert and in the end the shot came in from Emsley uh, but there was a close enough attention to prevent it being a threat yeah it's good play from Scotland as well and it's come from our free kick as well I spoke about making Campbell, uh, Campbell's clearance to Katie McCabe a couple of moments before that but it was a a short free kick and it got them on the break and Caroline Weir does really, really well here on the edge of the box. She just sets it to Cuthbert, I think it is, and she finds Emsley who tries to get herself turned, but fortunately for us, the Irish defence got back in and defended. It's a great block from Jamie Finn. Meanwhile, out of the back of the Scottish half and Katie McCabe forcing the back pass, which uh, Lee Gibson can find. Evans with, and now it's Howard and Evans once more. Just feel about like a little bit more forward momentum for the Irish. They've been uh, taking a lot of Scottish pressure, a lot of Scottish possession. But that's one back by Denise O'Sullivan. And now it's Payne, Heather Payne, on for Lily Ag. And she just wasn't aware where it was coming, but she's still there. O'Sullivan with a shot. And McCabe. Couldn't quite work it away, but she's won the free kick. The referee spotted that uh, opposition tactic. Kicks Katie McCabe. <laughs> I looked at sore when I think she got a, a kick and her, she caught her foot on the ground as she kicked it there. You can see. Oof. Yeah. 
But I think initially Katie McCabe started that press and I think it was the right thing to do. I think Ireland, the last thing we want to do now is to try and sit into our shape and just let Scotland come at us. I think we looked more positive and more promising when we got forward and pressed them, particularly Katie McCabe in those high areas. And I think we've yet to see Denise Sullivan get on the ball. I think if we can press a little bit higher, I think at the moment we're giving Scotland a little bit too much respect at times. We've got a free kick in a decent position here and a chance to send the taller players forward. So there's Louise Quinn and Diane Caldwell. And Niamh Fahey's in there too. So this is a, a position that Ireland uh, could well exploit. Katie McCabe standing over the ball. Now it invites the, the perfect delivery and they can attack it. So from McCabe to the back post, Quinn got in there. And in the end it was Caldwell who made the contact and sent it behind. Louise Quinn's always going to be a target and uh, he just curled away from her. Caldwell at the back post couldn't bring it under control. Yeah, I think Diane Caldwell just sees it late, doesn't she? It's hard to adjust her body to get it back across goal. Uh, substitution again, Rebarra coming on. Emma Mitchell is on for Scotland here. And place of Fiona Brown. And it's Christy Grimshaw, two who have uh, played at uh, Supporting roles for Scotland, taking the place of the right back, Lisa Evans. And Amber Barrett, meanwhile, has come on for Ireland. I think Heather Payne seems to be limping a little bit there. I think it seems to be an injury cause or has made that uh, substitution. I think we've, in our previous games, Heather Payne has stayed on for the dying minutes as well, so I'm sure it wasn't the. A planned substitution, but a different uh, player playing up front now as well for Ireland. So it'll be interesting to see if we adjust how we play, or will it be the same kind of outlook on the game? Yeah, the point that was made that uh, Ireland don't really have the the bench to indulge in. Uh, that it's it's not the the strongest suit in Vera Pau's armory, and she doesn't often enough use all five substitutions. But this one. Amber Barrett being sent on would appear to have been forced upon her uh, by circumstance. Yeah, I think if you look at the bench Ireland have, it's, it's more defensive and midfield players as well. I think the only attacking options is Amber Barrett and Saoirse Noonan on the, on the bench as far as I can see. I think the likes of um, Jess Sue obviously out and Leanne Kiernan out there, big losses to the team. They're players who were playing those forward areas. Particularly Leanne Kiernan, I think that pace up front, we, we miss that when you have to take off the likes of Heather. Gabby Larkin as well in the stands if it's not on the bench tonight, so she would have been a good threat in that forward line as well. But uh, against that, we can't say it's a like-for-like -like substitution, so the shape doesn't have to change. Amber Barrett is uh, one who can slot straight in. Playing in Germany now with uh, Turbina Potsdam. Oh, a lovely return there with Katie McCabe. It's Barrett here. Just unable to keep control of the ball and her footing. Now that was the Scottish substitute Grimshaw dispossessed. McCabe is looking for O'Gorman. But over there is the other Scottish substitute on the team sheet as uh, Mitchell, but uh, using her married name of Bucandi on her shirt. Just trying to confuse us, George. <laughs> Same player, of course. Fahey. O'Gorman dispossessed. And one looking for Grimshaw through the middle, but Courtney Brosnan's out to claim it. And we enter the final quarter of the 90 minutes. Still no goals. Let us not forget the part Courtney Brosnan played in saving the penalty from uh, Caroline Weir early in the first half. 
and the opportunities that Ireland did have but weren't able to capitalise on. It stays nil-nil in Hampden Park. It's Corsi, the Scottish captain to Howard. Corsi to Howard once more. Now Sophie Howard. And there's nobody there in navy blue. Jamie Finn can force it out off the Scottish player for a throw. It's just a repeat, Ireland's World Cup journey can continue with a draw. Though it wouldn't be direct qualification, it would be a trip to New Zealand in February. To play in the Intercontinental Playoff round. Uh, featuring teams that are all below Ireland in the world rankings. Yeah, I think if Ireland were to get to that, I think we'd have to be pretty confident that we could get through it. But as I said before, would it nice, be nice to go through before that? And they can do that by winning here tonight. Emsley on the board, Fahey makes the block. Scotland get the first corner of the second half. Near Fahey offering the second line of defence. But uh, a moment of concern as Ireland must face the aerial threat. Scotland good and exploiting the corner, Brosnan there with the fist, and that's not going to trouble Courtney Brosnan, Caroline Weir right underneath that, over the top, goal kick. Well, we reckoned it would be KG, and that it could go all the way to 120 minutes. Didn't quite work out the way it was intended. Straight out of play, it's gone. Fan standing firm. Now it's O'Sullivan. And there's the run of Barrett. And Barrett's giving herself a chance here. Amber Barrett in on goal. Amber Barrett yes! makes the breakthrough. That was sheer brilliance from Amber Barrett. The first touch to take her clear was absolutely terrific. And Amber Barrett kneels in celebration in honour of the Donegal folk who passed away in the disaster in Chrysler. What a moment for the Donegal girl. It's brilliant from Amber Barrett. We spoke about her coming on and it was the team going to play into her, her strengths and talk about her. She's a perfect example of running off the shoulder of the player. It's what she's good at, it's what she's done her whole career. And she's got that moment, it's a great ball through from Denise O'Sullivan. It's a brilliant, calm, com uh, composed finish. Absolutely brilliant for Amber Barrett, and I'm absolutely delighted for her as well, because she's a player who's had to be patient at times throughout this campaign. She got her start against Georgia, and again had to wait again, and here we come. Here she is coming on to score one of the most important goals in Irish women's fo football history. It's brilliant, brilliant from Amber Barrett. You can see the touch, she sets herself. Doesn't panic at any moment. It's a great first touch out of her feet. Looks where the keeper is, and it's a toe poke into the far corner. It's a brilliant composed finish from Amber Barry. Everything about that was perfect, and what an emotional moment for the Donegal woman. Excellent. On this night of nights in Glasgow. That was a moment and a half in the history of Irish soccer. This game is not over yet. But Amber Barrett on as a substitute for Heather Payne with the most magnificent composed finish to put Scotland behind. Now, Scotland have World Cup ambitions of their own, but they need to win tonight. A draw will keep Ireland in World Cup contention, albeit in terms of a playoff. But if they win, they're on the plane. But Scotland, of course, are still there. Diana's just taking that in the face. I think his body's on the line here from Ireland. They really want to make sure they don't concede here. Headed away by 
Katie McCabe who's back defending. Emsley. And Brosnan saves. The shot was from Cuthbert, but that was a confident goalkeeping for Courtney Brosnan. It's a good save, really good save, really good setup again from Ireland. They're not letting them get too much, too easy in on goal here. They really need to remain calm, remain compact. As I said, and as you said, Scotland need to win this game, so the pressure is on them now to come at Ireland, so they will be coming at us. We've got to remain strong at the back, and Courtney Brosnan makes a good save. Well, what a moment that was, Brosnan coming to the rescue again. The referee seen a foul, foul, a free kick to Scotland. They just have to stay calm and composed, Ireland, because uh, we know a yellow card here. Who's that for? Is it Amber Barrett kicking the ball away? <laughs> they just have to stay calm and composed. And let us remind ourselves that in the last three outings, Amber Barrett, meanwhile, yes, yellow card, second goal. She scored in the, uh, in the Turkey shoot against Georgia, one of the 11. But she, uh, she's got a much more important goal tonight. My goodness. It's brilliant. And as I said, she's had to be patient. She's come on in games. She's not featured in some games. She got her start against Georgia. And again, coming on here tonight in a game of this magnitude to be as, so, as calm and composed as she was within that finish. And for me, it was the first touch that set her on her way that was just really, really good. And to have that composure to just poke the ball into the far corner was brilliant from Amber Barr. The two Scottish substitutions, the Abby Harrison here is the one who scored the, uh, the goal that brought them this far, the winner in extra time against Austria last Thursday night. So they're hoping for something similar from her here. But yes, against Finland and Georgia, and then finally against Slovakia. Three clean sheets for Courtney Brosnan. In fact, they've only conceded a single goal in the last five games. And in the course of qualification that brought them this far, they only conceded four in all in the eight games. So there is hope in that statistic that Ireland have the wherewithal to see this through in Hampden Park. Yeah, I think they've been defensively solid throughout this campaign. If you've got a good foundation to build on, then you have players who can produce that bit of magic. And that's what we've seen throughout this campaign. And no, no compromise there. Neve Fahey's gone down injured. Two really stunning tackles, both from O'Sullivan and from uh, Fahey. And Fahey, I think, may have injured herself in her effort. And uh, saying that she was... Uh, I think someone's left the foot in, it looks yeah. like. She's not, she doesn't look too happy there. It's not like Fahey to get involved with like that either, so there must have been something to make her react like that. Well, thankfully, uh, she's none the worse for it, but it would have been a painful one when it happened, and, and not a nice one either. A little bit of... Uh, uh, green keeping there by <laughs> Louise Quinn. But this was the moment, yeah, there you go. I don't think there's any malice in there from Emsley, is there? I think she's come in to try and win the ball. I don't think her foot was high. I think it's just a follow through that catches uh, Fahey on the shin. Well, thankfully, the shin guard has done its work and uh, free kick has been awarded anyway. And Louise Quinn takes it. And Katie McCabe is there. And back with Fahey. And nobody forward to take advantage of that. It'll go through to Lee Gibson, as she is now. And Scotland with uh, 13 minutes plus stoppage time to retrieve this situation. And this is uh, where Ireland have to show themselves as what uh, Pedro Martinez Loso was saying about Scotland, show themselves to be a World Cup team, show how they can close out a match when they get themselves into this position. It does nothing for the, uh, for the nails, does it? <laughs> it's nervy moments, all right, but I think Ireland have put themselves into a good position here. Katie McCabe uh, with that challenge that's given away the free kick. And uh, words from the referee telling her that uh, it was a foul. 
Adam. She's definitely not back far enough here as well, so Katie needs to be careful, having been given a yellow card. The referee has left the scene, so it would appear she's happy enough. Now there's the free kick from Weir. And Caldwell defends it. And Corsi's gone to retrieve it. And now it's Cuthbert. Neve Fahey is there. And that's out for a Scottish throw. <laughs> 11 minutes to go of the 90. Ireland leads Scotland thanks to that goal by Amber Barrett. And now it's Barrett away again. It's all the way through to Alexander. And Scotland have to try and build once more. Fahey's there. Scotland's attack falling down, but winning it back. And an opportunity here for the cross to come in. And for Jamie Finn to clear it. Still not away yet. Oof. That could have gone anywhere. Where it's gone is for a corner kick to Scotland. Yeah, Scotland piling on the pressure now, just trying to make something and get some create some sort of chances and that ball comes off Diane Caldwell who gets herself into a good position but from her position up here in the commentary box I wasn't sure where that was going another moment to danger for Ireland but they've managed to get it away and Louise Quinn got her body in the way it's Grimshaw chasing and back with Harrison somebody down with a head injury here as well and the Scottish fans not happy that uh, the game has been stopped but uh, referee indicating that she'd no choice but to uh, stop the game with a player down with a, a head problem. It's Megan Campbell, I think, is it? Have a little look here. In the midst of all that, yeah, Megan Campbell yeah, went down. I think Cuthbert has come across her there. I don't know whether she's caught her with her arm, has she? Oh, no, it's a, coming in from behind. She's got a bit of a clash. So it's a ten assistance on for uh, Megan Campbell. A bang in the back of the head. And uh, Nicola Doherty replaced by Jen Beatty, who uh, comes from a, a well known Scottish rugby family. Her brother Johnny Beatty is a Scottish international. Her dad, John Beatty, was. Also a, a Scottish international forward. But uh, the round ball game is the one that's attracted Jen. And here she is completing the five substitutions for Scotland. Yeah, she's a very experienced player. She's played with the likes of Man City. And was at Arsenal before. And now she's back at Arsenal again. A very good player. Spells in France with Montpellier as well. So she's a player who I think will bring a bit of experience to this team. But I'm not sure if it's too little too late for Scotland. In terms of what she can bring to the attacking side of the team so I want to make absolutely certain that uh, Megan Campbell is okay before saying that uh, she can continue and just to um, point out the, the permutations in case uh, the, there's any room for confusion if the scoreline stays like this Ireland qualify for the World Cup if they win in extra time they qualify for the World Cup if they draw of course, the game can't end in a draw, but if it ends in a draw and goes to penalties, it counts as a draw. And that means they go to the playoff, the intercontinental playoff in February in New Zealand. But right now, the way it is, as things stand, whisper it, <laughs> Ireland. Ireland would be on the way to the World Cup. Say nothing just yet, George. No, <laughs> no but to, to, to explain that it's, yeah. it's such a complex process. And it really is. They've ended up here in this 
playoff round uh, that it, it was never straightforward but it is straightforward now we know if something happens and that's an Irish win then it's decided given what happened elsewhere Switzerland and Portugal winning the other two ties after extra time here we have six and a half minutes to go plus whatever Esther Staudley is adding on and it's it's one of those periods in the game in a game when things are as you'd want them to be but there's a while to go yet Lee Fahey with a head away and Jamie Finn can't keep it in play Megan Campbell seems to be okay there she's coming back on the pitch so Ireland back to full stretch Brosnan's out and Brosnan makes the save it's good again from Brosnan isn't it as I said before she's commanding her area coming out collecting that ball and claiming it and keeping it cleanly really good from the Irish goalkeeper tonight on by Denise O'Sullivan back up in the air by Beatty and now Scotland attempt to put together an attack once more Grimshaw a draw is no good to them in terms of World Cup ambitions they have to win to have any further progress towards Australia and New Zealand and that shouldn't trouble Courtney Brosnan nor does it from Claire Emsley and that's another few moments taken up as we approach 85 minutes on the clock these last five minutes will probably go very slow George <laughs> they will they surely will amazing really looking back all those years to when you were involved in that Euro playoff what, 14 years ago and that was deemed to be the most significant night in uh, Irish women's football provoked a headline in the Cork Examiner on a quote from Noel King saying just that yeah. well this night could be even more significant history is there to be made Graham now and a chance still the Kemsley get out of her feet brilliant brilliant defender from great Ireland. defending and Barrett there with a layoff that maybe didn't go where it was intended a free kick awarded oh, against Lily that Ag. seems harsh I thought you'd done brilliantly to win the ball there it didn't look to be a foul at all but it's really bodies on the line here from Ireland isn't it yep these final moments the tension she's got the ball ratcheted up yes she got the ball and the referee saw it as a foul it's mm. given Scotland a chance of a way back it's a free kick that Ireland have to defend but with that proud defensive record they want to keep another clean sheet Caroline Weir who uh, had her penalty saved and Aaron Cuthbert the two players standing over the ball it's Cuthbert here and Cuthbert and Fahey happy to let it go past the post from Sophie Howard good defending by Neil Fahey knew not to intervene normally see her so agitated but they know they know how close they are I think she's just using her experience to make sure nobody switches off everybody's knows their role and sticks to it right till the last minute she does really well here she has a little check to see if anybody's coming in behind her but she just shepherds it out the experience in the EFA he's shown throughout this game I think when we had that game in the Ukraine for the European Championships to get to a playoff she was missing that day didn't play and I think it showed throughout that game but today she's been excellent and she was a big miss in that game you know we've made the point about the injuries that uh, Vera Pau has had to deal with uh, but Nev Fahey was one who came back from injury for this game having missed a couple and it's she's it's such told. an important player for us really is as I said not just her experience but she's an excellent player on the pitch always very vocal giving information just being brilliant again today Sophie Howard trying to drive Scotland forward team that's played in a World Cup team that's played the European Championship but they know they have to somehow get level to keep a World Cup dream alive here Ireland are in the driving seat 
Grimshaw. And Corsi. And Ireland with their shape back again, the 5-4-1. And that's an ambitious ball that Lily Ag can deal with. And Denise O'Sullivan too. And O'Sullivan bringing it clear. And the clock ticks on and the ball is back at the Scottish half. And the goalkeeper, Lee Alexander Gibson, is out. And Barrett wins it back. And O'Gorman forces the throw. And all these precious seconds, all these precious seconds are keeping the boat afloat. Well, they won't be in any hurry to take this throw in, which I think gives us the opportunity to ask you for your player of the match. Yeah, look, I think there's been a lot of standout performers here today. Katie McKay has been excellent, really dragging the team forward. I think Anya O'Gorman's put in some shift out on that right-hand side, the defence as well, throughout the whole team. But for me, it has to be Amber Barrett. I think the magnitude and, as I said before, the composure she showed for that finish and it's going to be one of the most important goals in Irish history. So my player of the match is Amber Barrett. Amber Barrett from Milford and County Donegal, the player of the match as Ireland stride forward towards the finishing line, which is now just minutes away. Aaron Cuthbert, Graham, and Brosnan's there. And the trademark fall to the ground to take up some more seconds. It's well claimed again, isn't it? She comes. I think she's just shown so much more confidence in the last few games for Ireland. She's commanding, it just comes out. You can see Harrison putting the pressure on her, but she keeps the ball held firmly. Six minutes. Six minutes. Wow. <laughs> it's, it's never easy, is it? Six minutes for Ireland to defend this precious lead. Fahey towards Barrett. O'Sullivan. Barrett making a nuisance of herself. It's come to O'Sullivan again. And Corsi, back pass cut off by Barrett, has to go wide for Beatty. Instead, Graham intervenes. Howard, Graham, and now Corsi. forward once more as the first of the additional minutes has almost elapsed. Scotland have scored quite a few late goals in, in qualifying as well so we really do need to just remain focused here and not let them get the ball into a dangerous area where they would be able to try and hurt us. The orange shirts are in there. Fahey doing her utmost, Fahey bringing it clear, only as far as Graham, but the bodies are there to block it again, up in the air from Corsi. And they've got that away to Barrett, but Corsi cleverly keeps it in play. Graham, the Scottish crowd get behind their team. Measure build up once more. Howard, BT. And that one's going out of play. And respite for Ireland. Yes, you made the point. You made the point, Stephanie. They do score late goals. Extra time winner from Abby Harrison, who also got the the late equaliser and the draw against Ukraine. You know, it's it's in them. It's in them to, to damage Ireland. But equally, Ireland have that stout defensive record to fall back upon. And they just have to see out now three and a half minutes. Yeah, I think Ireland have done really well not to give away any corners or anything like that either. Nothing stupid being given away here. It's just about defending their lines and clearing the ball every time they get every time they get the ball. And the Scots are really finding it difficult to break us down. Barrett just couldn't make it stick. It's Corsi once more. This is so tense. Katie McCabe into whack it a clear to allow Ireland to push up the pitch and leave it for uh, Lee Alexander Gibson to start it up again. Jen Beattie away, Rachel Corsi, the Scottish captain. And now it's Graham. And once again, Scotland failed to make it stick and Ireland clear. And we're now into the fourth minute of the additional six. This is real edge of the seat drama 
in Hampden Park. Ireland where they want to be, but they have to maintain this. Howard into the danger zone, off the head of Louise Quinn and away by Jamie Finn. But only as far as Corsi. Corsi, the Scottish captain. Corsi. And it's the Irish captain, Katie McCabe, who intervenes to deny Catherine Weir. So hard to bear the tension of this. It is a corner to Scotland. A corner to Scotland as the game ticks into its 49th minute. Brosnan stays on her line. Wouldn't come down for Weir. Headed away by Quinn. Opportunity for the shot. Anxious eyes cast towards the Irish box. But it's an Irish foot that clears it. And out for a throw. And we're in the fifth of the six additional minutes. Back into the danger zone. Louise Quinn once more. Towering header to get it clear. Once more. And Quinn this time with a foot to get it away. Over the head of Barrett who will put the pressure on and force them back. It's Graham. Graham away to Beatty. The seconds tick on. Cut out by Ag. Graham. Cuthbert now. Scotland try to come again. And the header. And Brosnan is there to see it out of play. Corsi up with the attack. Connected with her forehead, but couldn't direct it onto the target. And there is one minute to go. One minute to go at the home of Scottish football. Ireland lead, and the World Cup beckons. And somehow Courtney Brosnan has ended up with two footballs, and more precious seconds are used up. And that... Sorry, my boss. I think Ireland have, have really defended really well. You can see the ball's coming in there. Every ball that comes in, Louise Quinn, Niamh Fahey, Diane Caldwell, Jamie Finn, that... Megan Campbell, that back five have just been excellent tonight. They really have dealt with everything that's come at them, particularly in these last few moments where it's, it's tense, as you can imagine, here in Hampden Park. We're in the final 20 seconds, and then it's to the discretion of the referee. Brosnan out. Brosnan claims. And Brosnan wins the free kick. And that, you feel, is just about that. That's got to be it, hasn't it? Courtney Brosnan will take the free kick. The 51 minutes have elapsed. We're now at the time that Esther Staubli, the Swiss referee, is adding at her discretion. The minimum of the six additional minutes has been played. It's a free kick. You've got to place the ball. <laughs> so there'll be a few more moments to be added. Maybe a little bit of gamesmanship on Courtney's part, but nonetheless... I think she knows that she's doing all right. <laughs> here is the free kick. We're in the 52nd minute of the second half. Brosnan takes it. That's it. Esther Stadley blows the whistle. And Ireland are going to the World Cup. What a night in Glasgow. The girls in green, in their away colours tonight, have hoisted the flag. The tricolour will fly in Australia and New Zealand next summer. This is sensational. History is made in Glasgow tonight as the Irish women claim their first ever finals appearance. And where better to do it than in the biggest tournament of them all, the World Cup. Oh, what a moment, George. I'm so happy for every person on that pitch, and not just the people on that pitch, but the people that have gone before them. There's been so much work put into Irish football over the last few years. Since I started playing, as you mentioned before, under Noel King, the likes of Sue Ronan, who came in as manager, no, or Colin Bell as well, who had a spell. So many of those managers have put the work in over the years. So they deserve credit as well. And the players that have gone before us as well. So many of them players put so much effort in, but it's this group of players that have made that breakthrough and got us there. And I, I honestly can't believe... Can't, expressing words how, how happy I am right now and almost it's emotional to be honest with you George I think to get this far and to see us get to a World Cup it's it's unbelievable it really is I'm so happy for everybody out there well said Stephanie it is a magnificent night for Ireland it is a magnificent night for Irish football and but particular for Irish women's football and let us not forget how it came about it came about 
off the back of a fourth consecutive clean sheet, which was achieved thanks to a magnificent penalty save from Courtney Brosnan. And it came about through a wonderful team performance where they all put their bodies in the line and delivered. And it came about because a young woman from Milford in County Donegal at this awful time for that county has lifted the spirits of the Irish nation with a goal that was a goal for the ages, a goal that was in its conception so perfect how she took the pass, created the space to run onto the ball and then finished it with such coolness. Amber Barrett has written history for Ireland and Ireland are in the World Cup and I can hardly believe I'm saying that. Yeah, it's fitting, isn't it? I think as I said during commentary there during the match for Amber Barrett to come on and get that winner with everything that's gone on over the last couple of weeks. Um, and what a player she's been for Ireland too. She's had to kind of be patient at times. We spoke about her fondly so often in terms of her finishing and her, her capabilities of scoring goals. But what a time to come on and use that and get that goal, that all-important goal. As I said, I'm absolutely delighted for her. And also, as I said, the work the girls have put in, the likes of Louise Quinn, the likes of Katie McCabe, Neve Fahey, Anya O'Gorman, who's been there for so many years. Years. This is the moment they deserve, and I'm just so happy for them all. And Louise, that we've just been looking at, she will win her 100th cap. It's at brilliant. The World cup. Absolutely brilliant, George. What a top performer, and what a place to achieve that milestone. The Sp Scottish manager, the Spanish manager, Pedro Martinez Loza, tries to console his troops as the Irish celebrate, and rightly so. For every winner, there's a loser, and you feel for them, but we feel too the glory of an achievement in Hampden Park that matches the achievement of another Scotsman all those years ago, 35 years ago, in Sofia in Bulgaria, when Gary Mackay scored the goal that beat Bulgaria, that sent the Republic of Ireland to its very first major finals. The circle is complete. We're in Scotland, and that's where Ireland have got to their first women's finals in the history of the Football Association of Ireland. A magnificent night a privilege to be part of it, to be here in Glasgow, to celebrate an achievement unparalleled in Irish women's footballing history. They're on their way to Australia and New Zealand next summer. And my goodness, there might have to be a house or two mortgage to pay for that. I tell you what, I'll be looking to go anyway, George. <laughs> <laughs> what what a, a summer to look forward to. The Women's World Cup is on from the 20th of July to the 20th of August. Next year, Ireland will be one of the 32 teams there taking part. The draw for the World Cup, we can, we can look forward to that now. The draw for the World Cup takes place on Saturday week, October the 22nd in New Zealand at half past seven in the morning. Set your alarm because Katie McCabe will be leading Vera Pau's team to the World Cup. Yes, Ireland are in the World Cup, the Women's World Cup, for the very first time. Scenes of delight and joy in Hampden Park, and final score that has taken them there. Scotland nil, Republic of Ireland won. Savour that, savour that.